our new live in a few minutes. to see you. Hello, Roman. We're waiting for Claire that should join us to start this new conversation. Last week we had a a very nice talk with uh, Julien Leguest that was uh, showing his work on a collection of coffee table. We were in the southwest of France near the, the Atlantic coast. And today we're going to travel a little bit further west to Ireland Claire, are you joining us? I can't see you. Let's see one or two more minutes. What's going on? Ah, good to see you. Hello, Claire. Hey. <laughs> Hello, Nadine. Hello, How Claire. Are you? Very good, very good. It, it seems you're very far, only a few, really? few miles away, but... Uh, I know, I know the connection, the connection is not is, so good. connection is always a little bit strange, but yeah. finally we're together and we're very happy to, well? to start our new life. Yes, we, it's very yeah. good. Yes, very nice. Okay, okay. Sorry about that. We can start. Yes. <laughs> Uh, so I was uh, saying that today we're going to travel a little bit more west than, mm -hmm. the, than last week uh, to Ireland and to meet a wonderful designer called Alan Meredith. Yes. Alan is, uh, is working on a wood collection. And, uh, Alan is a sculptor uh, and uh, an architect and an interior designer as well, right? And he designs uh, furniture as well. Yes, furniture, objects that are kinds of uh, sculptures, yes. And also he works on uh, uh, installation for uh, architectural projects. So it's really interesting. He's, uh, he's, 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 I have to say, uh, it's, it's very impressive to, li to, to read uh, all the stories about Alan uh, Meredith, like in... Uh, and yes. everything he has done, he has a lot of uh, awards as well. So we, we'll ask him a little bit more about that. Yes. Uh, ju just to to explain, uh, we are at the French apartment, and our yeah. we're mainly focusing on the French design and uh, and French makers. Uh, but of course, uh, Europe is uh, is also uh, very connected, and we and and I've been very happy to meet uh, Alan uh, a year ago on a, on a fair uh, furniture fair in Paris and uh, Maison et un, un objet. Hein? Yes, we the fantastic uh, Maison and Objet in Paris. That that's right, and and then I discover something I've never seen before, uh, which is really uh, incredible technique that he has developed, and I want to to show you what he's doing, what we have here at the French Apartment Gallery, and then we will talk with him to see how he's doing those wonderful pieces. So let me show you what we have here. This is a yeah a two-piece set of uh, a console and shell. 
Beautiful. try to show you the maximum I can show you. So this is oak. This is Irish oak. Uh, Irish oak. A really nice Beautiful. finish. This is ebonized color. Uh, this is quartz finish. And obviously what is really amazing is the shape that the woods piece uh, finally he obtains. This is a, a technique of uh, bending the wood with steam. And I really yeah, that's I it. never heard about that before, Nadine. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I admit, never heard about that uh, technique at all before. Yeah, it's a it's a rare technique, right? I, I guess so. Yes, uh, I, yeah, I, I guess so too. On that, that type of piece. So I think it's going to be time for for us to invite Alan and see uh, if he can tell us more about. Julien Lagueste just joined the, the live. Oh, hello, Julien. Hello, <laughs> Julien. <laughs> That's nice having you again today. So yeah. ask my question, Nadine. I'll ask my question um, by text. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let you uh, invite uh, Alan and I'll see you uh, in a little bit at the end of the live, okay? Yes, with pleasure. We will talk again. See you later. See you later. So let's have Alan tell us a little bit more. Hello, Alan. Hello. Hey, great to see you. How are you doing? Good, thanks. How are you? Very good, very good. It's nice having you uh, live at the French apartment in Los Angeles. So where are you? Tell us a little bit more. <laughs> I'm in County Leash in the Midlands of Ireland. So yeah. right in the middle of the countryside. And I live... And, and you're confined in a beautiful place, I guess. <laughs> yeah, it's okay. So we have some room to move around. Um, and the restrictions are being eased slightly. Um, on a kind of every couple of weeks um so it's getting a little bit better um but so, uh, we're, we're still closed the workshop is still closed and um how okay. how do you handle the, yeah. this moment is it is it a good time to concentrate is it a yes. frustrating um, time do you what do you miss what do you like <laughs> yeah so i've been probably doing more design work than before less making so it's been difficult to get materials and mm. uh, deliveries can't be made. So uh, it's probably best just to work on designs and um, wait for things to open up again. And uh, so you, so you, you, you're missing your. Uh, you have some people. People is that helps you on, on your on your workshop. Yeah, I usually have two oh. people, two people working with me. So they're. Um, not working and they're at home and then obviously no one can come to visit to see the pieces mm -hmm. in the cage or to, to look at their previous work and you know if they were thinking about commissioning it would always be um, good to have a visit and look at previous work and talk about what we do yeah yeah okay so so t tell us a little bit uh, about your environment is that a place that inspires you or I think you live in a, in a wonderful uh, uh, country house or this large space. Yeah, so this is an old, um, the photograph you're looking at is an old uh, stone building which was a stable and grain store and I converted it over a number of years into a workshop. So yeah, I suppose it's got, it's made from, from sandstone, kind of raw material um, which I suppose would be similar to my work in a way. Um, trying to, you know, that minim minimalist form, raw, raw material from the local, it would be local stone. So that's quite nice. And then obviously the, the environment that trees around and the actual location and the area is the oak, is the name of the town's land. So um, that's interesting. I suppose at one time, I, there must a lot of oak trees and that's where the name wow so so you work mainly on on uh, on wood uh, that's your main inspiration uh, for mat for materials and uh, 
what, what kind of wood you do pre would you pre do you prefer to work with? Mostly the work is in ash and in oak. And oak would be good for outdoor um, commissions because it naturally is um, repellent to like the um, insects and, and it doesn't rot when it gets wet. Um, much better than other materials. Um, and then also I use it for furniture because the colours you can get naturally the fuming, the etonising. Um, and also then my vessels are all oak. But I also use ash for uh, furniture, for steam bending. The big pieces that are steam bent sometimes are, are ash because it is, um, probably takes to that technique quite well, especially with big sections. So oak and ash will be the two main periods here. Wow. Is that the piece of ash that I, I have on the picture it's right now? The picture um, from a, the local sawmill that's uh, the end of an oak tree, yeah. Okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> Very nice. So tell us a little, a little bit more about the, the collection that I, I just showed here at, at the French apartment, which is the Vinculum uh, console and, uh, and shelves. Uh, let me show you again. So we had this piece. Yes, yeah, so the Vinculum console and the Vinculum shelf, which um, I suppose that, that whole body of work is about using the wood, steam bending the wood and making a, a functional piece of furniture, which um, I suppose needs less components because of the way it's, the wood is manipulated. So in the case of the table, the, the surface of the table and the leg of the table are the one piece of oak uh, and the shelf, say, in, in the, you're looking at there, is a second piece, so the two pieces of oak are steamed and attached together in the car. So, as the material, we've uh, a kind of adjusted the wood to match the function and minimizing the number of components. And I suppose through that process and that way, of thinking, a form emerges, which is uh, in a way um, more dynamic. Uh, more sophisticated and it's using the material in, in its and its natural properties so you know if we yeah, steam and wood, and we... we can make these shapes so, um... wow and uh so th this this piece is 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 very is is one of the main in your collection i i, I guess it, it, on soul, what is <laughs> What is the inspiration for, for this? I, I, I understand the function. I understand the, the, the mini, to minimize the quantity and the pieces. And, and, but, but is there any story behind the, the, the way you think about the new, new shapes and new? In, in terms of the new shapes, I, well, in one sense, it's about trying to bend the material as far um, as is possible and pushing the boundary of, of what the material can take. But then in terms of the overall form, making something that's elegant and refined and that you know, pose it's like a drawing or a line. But the shelf, especially on console, are about simple lines that um, by bending a piece of wood back on itself, uh, so that's technically what's possible. And what does that mean as a gesture on a wall? Mm -hmm. as a, as a yeah. Um, so I can show you that piece here, and you're standing beside it, the, the, the console. So this is a development of the piece that you have. This piece has mm -hmm. the drawer added in the center, so it's quite a long console. And it has a drawer which opens out and is, is oak, natural oak, and also then lined, the drawer box lined in the and it's got a nice soft close uh, function. So I, I guess then the finishes are, there's a number of different finishes, but this finish, which is the same as the finish on the table that you have is scorched oak. So that's, again, the finish, like the design is kind of tied back to what the material is, uh, what's the possibility of the material. Um, so when you score oak, quite a simple technique in a way, and then it's sanded and finished. It gives it that nice ripple and nice texture, which is very tactile and mm -hmm. a nice touch quite, and quite interesting.
things to touch. So it, I suppose the design process is tied back to the material. Um, again, that the piece that, in the photograph is the, the Vinculum uh, table, dining table, which I have a little model of here. That was oh, just yeah, that's finished. So again, wow. we were looking uh, how to make a table top surface, um, a dining table, how it would have minimal number of components, and then how the table surface could bend to become the leg and have gracefully um, the ground. And, and then I suppose that develops into how to refine how, That's the concept and the material. Uh, worked out. We know, I suppose, at that point what the idea is, but it's about refinement after that and refinement of the form to make it um, as, uh, you know, it needs to flow and, and the piece obviously be wholesome, sit confidently in, in a room. That's really beautiful. Um, so talking about the bending, I wanted to, to show uh, this picture because it's really interesting to see how how huge pieces you, you can manipulate and, uh, and, uh, and, and give those wonderful shapes. It's really amazing. Uh, this, this, is, is, how long is the process of working on those pieces? Yeah, well, so to make the actual steam bending process, there's a jig that's made. And it's the, the negative shape of what, whatever shape we want to create. And there's a, a whole setup that's quite a time consuming process. And then the steaming, once everything is ready, the wood is cut, everything's you know, in its place. The wood is put into a steam box and it's uh, steamed for three hours uh, and then it's it taken out. And then all very quickly, in, we might have five, 10 minutes to work on the on the piece, get it into the, the template and bend it around the form. And then once, once it's, it's, it's bent, it's left and it dries. And then it's left to dry for maybe three weeks, four weeks, uh, depending on the species. Mm -hmm. the Sometimes it can be longer, large piece, 12 weeks. So um, in a way, there's a lot of preparation. Then everything happens quite quickly and quite intensely. And then it's left again. So where it's really capturing a very a moment, uh, you know, with steam and it's just wood is bent and then it's frozen like that then for... for mm. Do you have any, I would say, bad surprise sometimes that one piece w wouldn't react the way you were expecting or one, one leg doesn't uh, really uh, go the same way than it should from the yeah, other absolutely. side? Absolutely, because the wood... If there's any little knots in the wood or defects or the setup is correct, it can all um, not work out. And I suppose at the early stages when we're developing the technique and trying to understand what the critical parts of the bending are and the time for the steeping, I guess at this stage we kind of have an idea. Um, and it's very much a feeling. It's not something be quite difficult to make a doc describe how to, how to do the technique. Like there is general rules, but um, a lot of it's just about knowing, uh, you know, how quick to, to bend the wood, how long to steam it. Yeah, so the kind of get. It. So, so, so sometimes you, but you, you must have some experience now, and you, you must probably more anticipate uh, it yeah. or easier. Like we made one table, which I can actually show you, um, which has, uh, it's just down the stairs here. It's got sixteen steam bent components. And it's a big dining oh, table, yeah. new piece. So each That's... corner here has got four steam bent pieces that are joined together. So I have a, I have a small version on the top pictures, but the the, yeah, the one exactly. you show us is really like three times the size. It's it's yeah, huge. It's four yeah. feet long, and there's um, eighteen chairs. So when we're steaming these pieces, there's sixteen pieces to be steamed and I guess the first because they're quite thick they're, the thickness of material is like 44 mil or something like that which is almost an inch and three quarters um, we're steaming that it's um, first few it, it takes a while to get get into the flow of getting small correct and then 
uh, we tend to have everything worked out, know what, what where to put the pressure on, what's the right way to do it, and then it, um, it tends to work out. And the rest, you know, the the first couple have, there might be some issues, and then it's ironed out, and we know what we're doing. So, um, yeah, so that's quite wow. so the corners of the of this table is is the real challenging point, and then the rest of it is just um, straight planks mm -hmm. of iron. Um, and this amazing. table was unique in a way that the grain runs around the perimeter. So uh, wood needs to be moved. So that's why we developed this central uh, shape, which you can see. And this allows mm -hmm. the wood then to move in and out. So uh, during the seasons, as um, very interesting. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, I, I see. What you mean. Mm -hmm. So, so I can. Show you then. Uh, I might as well just show you the workshop a little bit. So, uh, oh, yes. upstairs studio, and then uh, down here we've got some bench space, and the, this table, which is taking up a lot of room at the minute. So <laughs> that's problematic, I suppose. But uh, hopefully now with the restrictions lifted, we'll be able to move it on to its final home in Dublin very soon. And then in here, I've got some machinery uh, and. Uh, wood store and I can just show you the steaming technique for a vessel so if I was uh, steaming something like this which is, yes we, di um, we didn't talk yet about the vessel but that's the other uh, part of your collection is, is this collection of uh, that you call vessel so uh, tell us how it works <laughs> so the vessels are turned for first of all wood turning laid like this they're hollowed and uh, made in cylinders, or they have a curve on the bottom and a texture. And then once they're turned and hollowed, ready to be steamed, and they're cut at that stage, some of them are cut, not all of them. This one here was, was cut. So you can see here how there's two folds. It's put into a box, this box, which has a connection with steam from a wallpaper stripper. So it's put in the box, a lid is put in the box, uh, the wallpaper stripper is turned on for an hour. This fills up with steam and then it's taken out and very quickly then it's molded by hand. It's able to be folded. So in this case, it's able to be folded and then it's tied and it's left to dry. So that's um, how the That's a, a great collection of uh, yeah. objects and yeah, very, very nice pieces that's really I, I have one at the gallery i forgot to show it <laughs> today yeah. um so the yeah it's humed oak and it was it wasn't cut it was just adjusted after um it was hollowed and turned yeah so i can just show you one more of the consoles that i have at the moment which is a work in progress is in fumed oak so this okay. is irish and it's got some nice uh, knots and uh, features there. Oh, which is quite nice. Very, very nice. The, the the picture is not very clear, but yes, we 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 were talking. About, is that the? It's similar it, to that. What, what is the, this color on the it's top doomed. picture? What is it? Fumed with ammonia. Okay, this one is ebonized, and 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 you have fumed. You have like three, three, four different finishes for the, for the colors and the, and the technique. Wow, that's that's great. And you also were talking recently about another piece, a cabinet. Let me find right. it. This one. Oh, so this one. Your your cabinet, which is a collector's cabinet, and the outside is made from fir oak. And it's got cuts in it, which have allowed it to move uh, relative to the tension inherent in the material. So wood dries, it moves. And that's to make the doors. So the idea was that it would read like a, a panel on a wall or a painting almost. Uh, a 2D image. And it opens then. And inside is another kind of world more ordered and structured and has, is made from, in this case, it was made in Irish holly, a dense, creamy, coloured wood. Um, 
not very nice pattering in the wood yeah so yeah. then a very nice surprise between the yeah comparing the inside and the outside exactly. it's really amazing so yes i've got some pieces uh for some new cabinets at the minute here they're drying at the minute so you can see how that works so this is more oak for some new new cabinets yeah yeah so it's not so very bring in the in the oak yeah. how it's moved we can see the the work is incredible yeah <laughs> so wow very nice and you, i think you have uh, some bench or how do you call it bench or sculpture it's 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 in between <laughs> yeah i guess it's um they have maybe a, a sense of some functionality but really they're no they're, they're probably sculptures um and the way they are made is that the uh the piece the tree is taken and cut with, with, with a chainsaw so the bark is removed and any rot or hay or imperfections in the wood are, are cut away and because i'm using a chainsaw uh, it's got a straight blade so you get facets on the surface of the, the piece so then uh, at that stage then the, the different facets and the kind of the shape the piece is naturally uh, reveals itself uh, you know with the chainsaw being uh, making these cuts so then uh, it, i suppose those shapes are then slightly uh, accentuated or exaggerated and then the shape the form becomes much more refined and then we start you know removing the material much more carefully uh, less material is removed and we're sanding and finishing until we get all the facets uh, perfectly finished um and then so, uh, there's an, another thing that happens then is the piece starts to dry a little bit. So sometimes there's a few cracks or it moves a little bit. That gives it another layer of, you know, to the form. So there's maybe three layers to the form, one being the original, the second being what we do to it, and then the third being another response from the material. So they're quite material-led, material-driven, but yet they're kind of dark forms. So that's the idea. I that's that's really nice. And at this point, we are very close to architecture, and uh, so so you, uh, b beside the collection of furniture and and decoration piece, you you work on ar architectural projects. Uh, can you explain a little bit what what type of? Uh, yeah, yeah. So, um, well, first of all, I would be asked very often by architects who I might have met through my work or studies or friends of mine that were from college who were working in offices. And so I have some contacts with architects and I've been asked a couple of times to make different pieces. So this um, this piece was for the Venice Beach Architecture Biennale in 2018. And it was for A2 Architects. So mm -hmm. they, they were given a, a brief and uh, were working on a precedent of an, an architecture and another architect that they were respond to and they designed this pavilion and then the pavilion um, uh, needed to be made so they got me involved and there was some refinement of the details and um, at that stage then uh, we got the materials so that, that, and that, shipped to Venice and it was displayed in Venice and then also in Ireland and uh, in two in Ireland so. But, yeah. And what, what what is the purpose or what is the idea of the of this uh, this piece? So it's it... it's so it, it was there's sixty in this room there was sixteen exhibits, and a two architects who were the architects I was working with they had one exhibit and what they were doing was responding to um, a Spanish architect and a building that he had designed for a, a sculptor who. Um, the sculptor had made a lot of work out of fake steel that was welded together. So um, the building was a museum for the sculptures. So it responded to the sculptures in a way. And then they were responding to the architect who responded to the sculptor. Uh, so okay. it was 
piece that was about a sculptor and an architect and, and they looking at that as a, a, a way, uh, an inspiration way to make. So it, it got many layers to it, but essentially they were making a room that was about architecture and what they liked about architecture, essentially. So this is what they came up with. And then we made, um, so, but, and I suppose, despite all the concept, and there's a lot, a big challenge actually how to, it's made from yeah, of, yeah. Um, of plywood and everything has to be painted and there's a lot of compound angle and a complicated structure. So <laughs> it had to be made here and then shipped to Venice and put back together again. We weren't allowed to go into the room to put it together. So it had, it had to be kind of foolproof in terms of its construction. Yeah. Wow. Something a little bit different. Uh, another project, which is for school, I guess. Yeah, that's for a local primary school. So for uh, four to 12 year old students. And it was a competition and I was shortlisted. So there was five uh, artists submitted an idea. My idea was based on the town of Port Leash. And so I looked at the maps and the maps that existed from um, like 400 years. So all the little towns around Port Leash have a road that comes into a center point where at one time there would have been a, a market square. So everything focused towards the center. And then this school was built on the, on the ring road, on the outskirts, as the, the town has now got a ring road. The life in the center of the town has been decimated because all the businesses have moved out to you know, big retail parks. So that's a problem, a kind of a social problem, but also a problem for the middle of the town. So that's what I was responding to, but also I was making a bench for uh, the 1,200 students that go to the school. And it's um, kind of response to the place that they know or the place that they're growing to know um, in a fun way, but also in quite a, a serious way, commenting mm -hmm. on on the place uh, where their school happens to be. And the school, the, the actual school used to be in the center of the town. And now it's been moved out to the outskirts. This is the new school, which is probably the most appropriate place for it because it's safe and there's loads of room for them to run around. It and has, uh, oh, and it is very functional. It's, it's like a bench yeah. where they can play and sit all around. And, and the planters, um, are, I have lots of, I, in this photograph now was taken plant, but they're all filled with plants that are, yeah. Yeah, a kind of variety that would be good for like sensory experiences for children and also the ground is sloping which is quite interesting but I kept the datum of the top of the benches level and the undersides of the benches match the contour of the ground which means you end up with some benches that are maybe 315 millimeters so kind of like a little over a foot and off the ground up to a standard seat which is 18 inches so there's a variety in seat levels because you've got four-year-olds and 12-year-olds in the, in the school. So there's yeah. Yeah, lots of meaning and lots of detail within the piece. So it's, Very um, nice. And, and now it's, it's, it's a little bit more green and the color mixed with the greeneries and, and exactly. probably a yeah. lot of children will go back soon <laughs> and yeah, enjoy so the space. In, so, and I hope the plants aren't dying because the... Oh yeah, <laughs> make men aren't there to do the watering. So, but if they do die, we'll have to replace. Them. Very good, very good. And it, it, there, I think you you've worked on a special project, which is this one. Uh, was it a, a very important piece for you? Yeah, this was a model that was made just in January for Graph Architects. They're the architects that cure twenty eighteen. Uh, Venice Biennale. They just won the Pritzker Prize, which is like the Nobel Prize for Architecture. Sure. And they also won the the Royal uh, British, the Royal Institute of British uh, Gold Medal all this year. So they're based in Dublin, and I have some friends that work in the office, and they needed a model made. And one of my old professors um, was talking to them one day, and they were a model to be made and passed on my name and the, they needed this model and it needed it quite quickly and it was for uh, the uh, Arkansas uh, 
uh, architecture school. They needed a new, it was going to be a new building and it's called the Anthony Timberlands Centre of Design, something like that. And it's going to be a wooden building that was part of the brief that it had to be a wooden building. So they, and, and part of the brief competition was that they needed a wooden model. So uh, quite a complex model to make, very short time span, but really enjoyable to work with them and uh, with their, like the people in, in their office. So, so yeah, it's an American, um, uh, it's a bit, it's, I think it's their first building in the USA. So, um, so that was a very in, important step uh, in, uh, in your work. Wow, that, that's very well, nice. Important step for Irish architecture, I guess. Well, whatever, I was just fortunate to be making the model. But, you know. <laughs> yes, very good. Uh, are there f new projects or new ideas you want to work on in the coming months? Or is there anything you want to share? To... Um, yeah, well, I suppose um, now we'll have more time to think. Uh, hope to get back um, the thing, <clears throat> I suppose the one thing I'm hoping to make very short is uh, a new set of cabinets, like the cabinets which you've seen. Um, so, like a collection of those cabinets on a bigger scale. So that's probably what those pieces of wood. That's what, yeah, those and the pieces of wood I showed earlier, what they were. So I've got some new pieces for the Lincoln collection. Um, which, uh, like a, a deck is one piece, um, which I'm hoping to make in the next couple of months. And, and also then you know, on the residual geometry work with the carved benches, I've got two new pieces, maybe three in oak. So those ones that um, you had the photographs of earlier were in ash. Um, so these ones are in oak, which I think will be quite interesting because oak tends to be a little bit more unstable and tends to crack and move more. So it, that, that could be quite interesting to, um, to see. Yeah, so looking forward to that. And also vessels, uh, there's a, an exhibition happening in Ireland in um, the autumn, a, a vessel uh, turned wood exhibition. I'm looking forward to being in that, Some new vessels. So. Um, very nice. So a, a lot, a lot to do, and and, and very interesting uh, results. We we are very glad we we can we can have a look at the the way you you work and the way you think about all you your collection. It's really it was really amazing. I really appreciate having you live from Ireland, from not far from Dublin, I guess. Yeah, one and, hour. From Dublin. One hour from Dublin. Okay, so thank you so much, Alan. It was really a pleasure. I, I wish you a wonderful evening. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you. Have a and... in the morning time, so have a nice day. You too. You, you too. Thank you so much. And see you soon in, in Los Angeles. I hope. Yes. yes hope. <laughs> Thank you very much. Have a great day. Great okay. evening. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. So that was our great designer, Alan Meredith. And we are back. And I'm back. Hello. Very interesting. <laughs> yes. Nice. Amazing. Uh, wow. Work. We, we, we learned a lot, I guess. Yes. <laughs> so, uh, yes, I, I really think he, he is a fantastic. Uh, maker uh, of course a lot of yeah. ideas a lot of reflection a lot of, a lot of thinking about uh, his work is a Very smart yeah. and he, he really straddled the boundaries between contemporary contemporary art uh, craftsmanship uh, sculpture architecture and architecture and it's really uh, an amazing combination of uh, yeah of uh, know-how and I really appreciate the, 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 the result. And as I said, the, this, the, this level of, uh, this technique of steam bending at such a large level, so, such big piece, did you see this huge table that he's doing? Yeah. It was really, it's, it's really know. unique. And I think uh, nobody in the world, uh, no, I've as never far as I know, such... is, is able to, uh, to, uh, to, to succeed in this. Uh, in, in yeah. This. 
I think you have to be very talented and very skilled to, to uh, go into that kind of technique. It's very impressive, really. I've never seen such a thing. But um, yeah, it was, it was really great to hear uh, you both uh, interacting. Very. Uh, yeah, very, <laughs> very technical conversation. We learned, yeah, very technical, but we, it's also, uh, uh, you know, the life uh, also... Um, yeah made for that like it's it's to learn different things different technicals around the world and hear uh those artists and those creators um, yes and 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 soon i'm very glad that i we can say now that probably soon you you can come and visit at the gallery uh, here in west hollywood because we're going to reopen probably very soon so yes i'm sure we can't so, wait <laughs> i'm sure people can come and see for themselves what yes. it looks like and touch because also the... Let's the, remind them where is the gallery, Nadine. Yes, the gallery is uh, on uh, North La Cienega uh, in Melrose, uh, near, near to Melrose Place. Uh, it's the design district and uh, we are here in West Hollywood, La Cienega, close to Melrose Place. So. And You're anybody can uh, book a private uh, uh, viewing as well, right? In the, in sure, uh, we, just... we, can, we can arrange a very safe uh, tour of the gallery. We have everything ready to, uh, to meet uh, people whenever they feel like coming back uh, to, <laughs> to yeah. really see uh, pieces. One step at a time, yeah. Yes, very carefully, but but uh, we we can probably arrange that this uh, this coming week, and and uh, it's going to be very nice to to talk with the designers and the customers and and show them again what the the quality is behind every de de the design. You can show it on the internet. You can look at the yeah. pictures, but the the quality of the making. No, the quality uh, has to be uh, really. You need to touch like uh, the wood and and see the pieces. I, I mean, there is and to yeah to to understand how it works. Yeah, it's, it's really a good option to to come and have a look. So that was a pleasure. Yes. <laughs> we have to remind our audience that uh, all the lives are available on YouTube and on Facebook as well, on the Facebook page, YouTube. If you want to uh, hear um, uh, the past session, like the past lives, uh, everything is in the page. Yes. So <laughs> it's very that. interesting. Like all those artists and all those creators are, they are really one of a kind. Like everyone, each one of them are very interesting. It's amazing. And uh, we will talk about another, an, an, another one next week. Uh, yeah. Maybe Edition Limité. Limited maybe Edition, edition. Limited. Yeah. Yes. Limited uh, Edition in English. Edition oui, yes. Limité. We have to finalize uh, uh, the project with them for mm -hmm. next week. And uh, we'll keep you updated anyway. If you yep. want to stay the, tuned, guys. Stay tuned. Send us a message if you have more questions. And uh, Follow the French Apartment Gallery on Facebook, on Instagram, Twitter. They are everywhere. That's it. Thank you so much, Claire. <laughs> Nadine, I'll talk to you soon. Have a yes. great weekend. You it was too. nice to see you. Thank Bye. you, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye, everyone.